So I'm going to start this off with a rendition of this song because me and my mom, we connect a lot on certain spiritual things because she knew that a while back, I pretty much was an atheist. At least I thought I was, but I discovered that I wasn't. It was just too much evidence to say that I couldn't possibly be. So we're going to start this off. I, I, I was nervous, so I had the screen. I had my, my phone up for about 10 minutes before I decided to get on, but let's go. So it goes, this old light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This old light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This old light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This old light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This old light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This old light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. So I know I didn't do a good job but I feel it in my soul. And kind of how this came to be is me and my mom were talking and I said, hey, stop that. I said that what I've discovered in my life, I got to let people know about it. I got to let people know. And if you want to know where that come from, it's Matthew 5, 15 and 16. He talks about if you get a light, Hey, stop, Cassius. If you get a light, don't put it where only you can see it. Put it where everybody can see it. So you don't want to just light your space. You want to put it on the mantle so it can light everybody's space. So essentially what it's saying is to let people see, to let more people see. That's, that's the thing. So if I see something and it will, it will behoove me not to share it with somebody, to let them see it as well. Now, what you do with the information is up to you, but to know that it's available, just to know that it's possible. What's up, Ken? What's up, Sam? Hey, thank you guys for jumping on. I appreciate you. You wanna get out? Let me let my dog out. Hey, Em, I'm letting the caches out. Because Cassius is an attack dog. <laughs> Your marriage was and that dude go crazy. Um, but I was thinking about that. And I always, when I grew up, they always sang that song. This old light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And it took me to be 48 years old to really understand what they were saying. This old light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. They said, hey, I've got something. I'm going to let this light shine for you. Like, I see it. And I'm going to put it on a mantle so you see it too. So whatever information you might come across, what you do with it is up to you. But I'm supplying you with the information. And you see how I, so, and the other one I have on here is Saul to Paul. So this, this religious, but not because the Bible is spiritual as well as practical. So Saul to Paul, and I was talking about recruiting. So, hey, this probably won't get a lot of play, and I don't care, hey, um, because it's going the right person will hear it. It's not for everybody. But I share it with everybody. Like I said, I'm going to let my light shine. I've been blessed in my life, and I started off with absolutely nothing. And now here we are. I'm talking to you here on Facebook. And, oh, so you guys probably going to catch this on replay. Or if you catch it live, type in live. If you catch the replay, type in replay. Um, but Saul to Paul. And I talked about recruiting. So when God, you know, they had Christian. So back in the day, being a Christian, you could get your head cut off. Let somebody know, hey, I uh, say I'm a Christian. And they would stone you or throw you off a cliff or cut your head off. So Saul got inside of him. Saul was this powerful guy. 
This was out there. So whatever Saul was doing, everybody knew what he was doing. Saul was just one of those people that people said, whoa, hey, if Saul's doing it, it must be true. Hey, if Saul's doing it. Did you see what he did over here? Did you see what Saul did over there? So God wasn't going after the weak person. He went after the strongest one. It says the only way to Damascus when Saul was looking to in prison and enslave Christians, God blinded him, knocked him off a horse, rubbed his face in the dirt, and he couldn't see for three days. And he said, why are you prosecuting me? Why are you prosecuting me? Why are you prosecuting my people? And he said he, he didn't understand. So when he came back and he got his vision back, he understood his mission. So, of course, I don't have recruiting tools like, hey, what's up, Franklin? I don't have recruiting tools like God has, but... God wasn't going after the weak one because the weak one wouldn't have done anything. They say he was just as he was next to significance as Jesus. So I say that about recruiting. So when I'm recruiting people for my team, so now I get into the meat of it. So to get you guys a framework of where I'm coming from, when I'm recruiting, I look at it the same way when I was a young man and I wanted to date a woman. I didn't go after a two because the no that came from the two was just as effective as that came from a 10. So when I go ahead and go to the 10 and take the no anyway. So if that makes sense, Saul became Paul. He left that, he put that life behind. He, wow, he killed off Saul and became Paul, but he had these convictions so when you when when I'm recruiting somebody, even if they are resistant and they have all these things about them and they have conviction, they have picked a side about something, they're recruitable. Because they have this desire and they have picked the, they have made a decision. They say indecision is a thief of, of opportunity. Uh, and I wrote something down. I said, you want a life full of adventures, make a lot of decisions. You have people that's afraid. I had a guy the other day and it it, 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 it struck me because I looked at him and he was older than me. He had gray hair and he had gray, he had a gray beard and gray hair and he couldn't make a decision. He, he, he couldn't trust himself to make a decision. He had all the blessings from everybody else, but he couldn't, let me step back a little bit. He couldn't make a decision. He could not decide if it was right. He couldn't make a decision. Indecision is a thief of all opportunity. He could not make a decision. So with that being said, when you're recruiting, hey, sometime I realize they're feisty. Sometime, uh, usually it's going to be a lot of resistance. But if you see them, so you look, you say, hey, that dude's sharp. He's really passionate about what he's doing. I'm going to reach out to him. I'm going I'm to I'm hit him up. I'm going to see what he's going to say. And more than likely, He's going to say, oh, no, I'm not interested in that. But you stay in. You don't, you don't go a different way. You stay in with him. You, you, you keep going because you know that once, if you can get him on your side and he has conviction about what he's doing, he will be great. I had a girl today that I was hitting up and I was telling her, she, I said, I'm sure, I'm sure you will be resistant because you, you have conviction. I see you, and I was nervous to hit you up because of your conviction, which made it more for me to hit you up. If that makes sense, because if I see you and I see your conviction, other people see your conviction as well. It's like you know that I have conviction about what I do. I do. I'm looking to leave a legacy, so it changes things. But someone that has conviction, I told you, like, I'm afraid. So when I first go to them, I'm like, you know what? Hey, you want to take a look at my business? I'm nervous. And that's good. Like, I love to do things that scare me. And of course, they're going to say, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because they got conviction. They are involved in whatever they're in. They're in it. They're in it. They're in it. So if I can get them on my side. What's up, Cornelius? I see you, brother. What's up, Jerry? What's up, Ali Bob? That's right. That's right. From back in the day. But I'm saying, when I'm recruiting, I don't go after the two. So just like when I'm out dating, well, when I was out dating, I should say, excuse me, when I was out dating, I didn't go after the two. 
Because the note was the same if it came from a 2 or a 10. But the 10 gave me a reason to go back because they had some kind of conviction about what they were doing, what, what, who they were, how they dressed, how they handled themselves, their demeanors. Hey, when you see somebody and they don't see you seeing them and they over there just being a certain kind of way, you're like, okay, that's just you. You ain't seeing somebody see you. You just being you. That's the people I go after. The people with conviction that, that believe in what they're doing and they don't mind being evangelical about it. Let everybody know this is what I do. Saul to Paul. Saul, Paul had to put Saul away. Boom, that's who I used to be. And then he had conviction about that new thing that he was doing. He was, he was a, a, a man of God. He was a Christian and he prosecuted Christians in the beginning, killing them, imprisoning them, slaving them, doing all these things. But when God touched him on his way to Damascus to do more bad, he saw it different and his conviction became strong in that. You get what I'm saying? So you can't really, I can't really uh, make somebody have conviction. Pretty much is the best way I can put it. If you don't have conviction, I bring you into my business, you're going to suck. I don't want you. I got to pump you up every month. Oh, man, it ain't working. Oh, man, it's such and such. Oh, this stuff don't work. Everybody I talked to said no. Yeah, you talked to the ones that need it. You ain't talked to the ones that had conviction. The ones that had something about them that was driven already. Hey, you take that energy of how driven you are over here, and we place it over here, we can do some magic. But if you ain't got no conviction over here, I bring you over here, you ain't got no conviction over there either, so I don't want you. I, and it took me, so here's the thing, I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm just saying, hey, you might be valuable differently. If that's the way, I'm not putting anybody down, you might be valuable in a different way. You know what I'm saying? So if someone has conviction over here, I hit them up, hey, I'm doing this business, you take a look at it. No, I'm expecting you to say no. No is where it starts at. Perfect, you said no, because you have conviction. So I can stay in there and get past that initial brash that you have, that we all have with conviction, I'm not looking at nothing, and take that conviction and move it over here, we can do big things. That's what God saw in Saul. Saul had this conviction, Saul was, hey, this is me. I'm gonna go kill all these Christians. I'm gonna go in prison these Christians. I'm gonna go enslave these Christians. He said, hey, I can take this with you. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, 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 I can take this, what you are, and I can utilize it. He looked, he said, oh my God, that's an awesome tool. This dude has conviction. Let's take that and put it over here and it's gonna do great things. So I don't know if that makes sense. But you see how I started this off? I said, my mom, <clears throat> me and my mom were talking and we kept talking about let it shine. We kept talking about let it shine. And you see how I start this, this, this live off. This old light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This old light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. That's the thing. You give somebody an opportunity. You don't take the light and put the light down. You put the light on the mantle so we all see it. What we do with the information is our business. But we all see it. Like I said, when God recruited Saul, he became Paul. He already had the conviction. He already had the conviction. The conviction was strong. He just needed to move it. So when I'm out recruiting, that's how I look at it. The mature me, so the baby me, oh my goodness, they need this. They ain't got no conviction. You're not gonna get them to do anything. I told you, pump them up every month. Hey. You gotta come over and do this. Hey, we gonna do this. We gonna get big. We gonna we gonna fly private. We gonna help all these people. We gonna go where we wanna go. We gonna have vacations for the month. That's the whole key. I, I, and it took me. Uh, I listened to Jim Rohn today, and Jim Rohn talked about. He talked about actually, actually that the Saul and Paul. That's where that came from. So let me give it up to Jim Rohn. Exactly posture. Give it to Jim Rohn. He said that. He said, hey, he did all these things. But he has, the conviction was so strong, he could use it over here. So I'm not going to stay over here that long. I want to share that. And I thought that was awesome. And it, it made me, I got fired up. 
I told you I had my phone set up and it took me 10 minutes because every time I practiced a song, it made me feel like tearing up. Cause it was like me and my mom was talking and we was on the same page and man, it was magical. So, sin, so I'm gonna finish this off with this soul light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This soul light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This soul light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. 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 With that being said, it's your boy, the Persistent Mitchell. I love you all. Hey, if you're tuning in on uh, replay, type in replay, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know that you feel what I'm doing. Uh, I love you all. God bless.